got the eye of the tiger, a fighter, dancing through the fire, cause I am the champion, and he hung down the hit me, louder, louder than a lion, cause I am the champion, and he hung down the hit me, Everyone, welcome to the Theater Podcast, intimate personal conversations with the industry's biggest names. I'm your host, Alan Seals. This is the final episode of the Anne Juliet Broadway Takeover. If you haven't already, go back and listen to the previous four episodes. It's other people casting creatives from Anne Juliet on Broadway. And now our guests are none other than Will Shakes and Anne Hathaway themselves, Betsy Wolf and Stark Sands. Gosh, having them both together was such a really cool experience. Normally, as you know, if you're a longtime listener of the podcast, I'd prefer to have people individually, but um, sometimes it makes sense to have them together, and this was no exception to that. To have Betsy and Stark together to talk about the way that the two of them as Betsy and Stark, not Will and Anne, have come together and support each other and how they helped build their characters. And and they both say in this, in, in the interview that... They wouldn't be who they were. Their characters wouldn't be who they were without the support of each other in in real life. And it just works. It works so well. And it it was sort of ironic that right after we finished recording this episode, I saw someone online post that you're only as good as your scene partner. And and I tend to believe that because, unless you're doing a monologue, obvi, because these two exemplify that. And they they help each other. They build on each other. Their characters seem greater because of, the work that that they're doing for each other on stage eight times a week, always giving, and it's just so much fun. So, as always, find me on find me online, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok. Let me know you're listening. I hope you enjoyed the Angelia Broadway takeover. Again, this is episode five of five. Go listen to the previous four for all of the other content from this phenomenal show. Leave a rating and a review of this podcast wherever you are listening. Tell your friend and everybody now. Enjoy this episode with Betsy Wolf and Stark Sands. Today, I bring you the final episode of our phenomenal Anne Juliet podcast takeover, which uh, Anne Juliet is one of my newest favorite musicals. Cannot stop telling everybody to go see this. In no particular order, I will introduce Betsy Wolf first, who has Broadway credits that include Falsettos, Waitress, Bullets Over Broadway, and The Mystery of Edwin Drood, and of course, her critically acclaimed performance as Kathy in the off-Broadway revival of the last five years, and starred in the 2020 film Estella Scrooge. Our other guest, Stark Sands, is a two-time Tony Award nominee and Grammy Award winner known for his role as Tunny in the original Broadway cast of American Idiot and originating Charlie Price in Kinky Boots. (sighs) Other Broadway credits include To Kill a Mockingbird and Journey's End, with additional TV credits that include Minority Report, Six Feet Under, and together they now co-star as the husband and wife duo Anne Hathaway and Will Shakes in the runaway hit. And Juliet, Betsy and Stark, oh my gosh, <sighs> gonna catch my breath. Welcome to the theater podcast. Thank you. Thank you. Runaway hit, is that true? It is in my mind. I like here. I like the sound of that. <laughs> it's, it, I think it's, it's a runaway hit. I loved it, and I, I've seen it multiple times. Mm. Um, I, I want to actually just quickly acknowledge, for those who haven't seen this show, Betsy, your character is real-life uh, wife of real-life person Will Shakespeare, your character, her real name was Anne Hathaway. So I yes. just want to get that out there. So if we refer to Anne Hathaway, we are not referring to modern day Anne Hathaway. Yeah, but we love her as well. We do. We do. But she was not. We have a fun nod to her in the show, which, of course, I don't want to, you know, but spoiler alert, alert. But, you know, yes, her character, her name was actually Anne Hathaway. And that's about all we know about her, to be real. <laughs> I know. And I think it's funny because in the show, um, there's all these recurring callbacks, the, the joke that the keeps going back to like well we don't know much about her so i i just love the whole the whole concept of Anne juliet kind of reimagines sort of like smash the patriarchy kind of stuff right it's like anne hathaway's coming in saying f you to will who's like rumored to maybe have these great 
you know, same sex relationships and, and other things. Right. So there's all this stuff that is going on behind the scenes and you just make it into this fun and presentable, uh, just neat little bow. You put this little bow on it. That's tied together by the phenomenal songs of Max Martin. And so I guess Stark, since mm -hmm. you haven't said much yet, let me see Max Martin for you. Did you know about him in general? Because I just want, I'm going to say one more thing and then I will shut up, I promise, is that he has the most number one hits, second only to Paul McCartney. And John Lennon. And John Lennon, which everyone knows of the Beatles, but so few, many, so few people know of Max Martin. So Stark, how did you know, Matt, what's your relationship with Max before Aunt Juliet? My awareness of Max was that he was the sort of brilliant mind behind the hits that I grew up with from Backstreet Boys, Britney Spears, that camp. And I heard about him back then. I did not realize that he continued to write and produce songs all the way until this moment. I think there's an Ed Sheeran song that came out today that he co-wrote or produced. Yes, he's, he has not stopped. Um, and, uh, and so I knew when I heard the, the Max Martin musical, I thought, oh, well, that's appealing, that that's going to have a lot of people that are excited about it. But I thought it was going to be all 90s songs. And I was so wrong because there are hits from five years ago in this show. Five years ago. Yeah. So I, I kind of got to, to know him and know of him in the Katy Perry days, like mm -hmm. when she started rising up and she wrote, I mean, he wrote like some of her greatest hits, which you sing in the show, which, which are incredible. And so like Betsy for you too, is, is, is it the same for you? And I will say this for myself that he kind of wrote the soundtrack of my teens and twenties and into my thirties now, even. Yeah, Even I mean, I'm, I'm 42. <laughs> I, I mean, if, if you just go through the songs in the show, I mean, I'm sure mo like most people, I can remember where I was, what year, maybe where, I, you know, what time in my life, like I can mark time by these songs. And so it's just it's it's just it's so satisfying to not only get to be able to sing songs that, you know, everyone knows, but to also just have them take on another life that is, I truly believe equally, and in some cases, even more profoundly cool than, you know, even some of the way it was originally intended to be. And so much of that is, is obviously to the credit of, of Max and his songwriting abilities is he, you know, if you really break down these lyrics, um, and then with the genius that is David West Reed, who then, you know, weaves them into the story. The book if, writer, yeah. The book writer, yeah. It's it's that combination that then is just like undeniably incredible. Um, and that is so rare for a jukebox musical. It's just, I've never seen it. And so, yeah, when I read the script and then was like, you've got to be kidding me. I just, I knew right away, this was just going to be epic. And I knew that I wanted to be a part of it. The appeal is really, really broad. There, it hits all, all, lots of generations. We every day see much older people, people that are our age and people in their 20s and teens and, you know, under 10 and they're all enjoying it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's a reason that, you know, Backstreet Boys and Sync, all these groups are still like they're You still hear their songs every single day all over the world. And I, God, I cannot imagine. Be, he's such a humble guy. And this is, this is going to be the talk about Max Martin episode um, that he seems like he's such a quiet and, and like in the background kind of guy that I kind of that he walks around and everybody knows of him, but they don't know him. And he could, it's complete anonymity in a in a totally famous way. And that's got to be the perfect lifestyle. You know what I mean? I think so. Yeah. Betsy, you had mentioned um, when you first read the script, uh, you knew you had to be in it. But when was that? Like, when did you get involved with Anne Juliet? I read the script pretty much October. It was it was near Halloween of um, 2021. And yeah, my agent sent me the script. I read it and I said, this has to be my next show. It, and not only next show, but my first Broadway show in five years. And even at the time, I didn't know that it was definitely going to be on Broadway. But I, again, reading it, I just thought there's nowhere else this could be. It, it just, it, ha it has to be. Um, this has to be a big Broadway show. And I just, I fell in love with it. I fell in love with, um, obviously the character of Anne Hathaway and, and just the idea of the, the concept of the story of, um, second chances. And, you know, we, we were, we were just kind of coming out of 
the first, I'd say, stage of, of the next world beyond the COVID. And um, it was like, what stories do we want to tell? Um, how do I want to spend my time? I'm a, you know, I was a new mom. Mm. Um, what, what stories are worth putting, saying to my family, hey, we might have to go out of town for five months. What does this look like? And the the reality is the show is it's it's genius i can't i honestly think it is so geniusly written and this idea that like things don't always go according to plan and and the way that they use romeo and juliet and the marriage of anne hathaway and william shakespeare one that we know you know kind of we we know so much about shakespeare but we don't know about anne we know so much about romeo but we don't know so much about juliet and the way that he empowers these female characters as well um, and so many different characters in this musical. It just was like, this is the story. And I think that's why this story also resonates with people is, is because after what we've all been through, you leave the theater feeling hopeful about your own life, hopeful about the choices you might make differently. Mm. And, um, you know, it's, it's your own user experience, but it just, we see people on their feet every night and they're just, it makes them feel something good. and you know, who doesn't want to do that every night? Right. I, I completely understand that. I think it's, it's the perfect sort of, um, lightning in a bottle sort of thing where you're taking the, like you said, the great story, this classic story with a modern take with so much representation that is, that is just desperately needed all across the industry in general. Um, and then putting it together with these songs that not only invoke just happiness and uh, happiness, like you said, in the current times that our songs released now, but also like the nostalgia of 10, 20, 30 years ago, because there's so much like we remember as children what, what that joy feels like. And now you both you both have children and I have I have two kids. And like so now I'm starting to relive all of these moments that these songs, especially the ones from my teens and twenties, right? These songs are coming back to me and I'm like, Oh God, yeah, I do remember that time. Like Betsy, like what you're saying, I do remember that. And now giving that moment back to the young generation, especially our kids. Like, do you think about that at all? When, when you're on stage or at the stage door, you have these, these kids coming up to you telling you how much they love it. Yeah. I mean, dark up. Uh, I think, you, you know, you can speak to this even more too, because I know your kids have gotten to come, but my daughter actually just came for the first time um, and saw the last 20 minutes of the show. And I, I remember that night I even screwed up my line because I was just so, I was just like, I could see her at the back of the house oh. and, and it was like the most special moment for me, you know, and, and um, just, it also reminds me of, you know, the sacrifice of what we do, but also just the fact that the, ultimately the reason why I, I wanted to do this was because I, um, know that she will know someday that this is a story that I chose to tell. And I hope that she will be so proud of that. Mm. But, um, and Stark and I are the only parents in the show. So it's, it's fascinating, which is why I think too, like, I just, you know, we rely on each other so much and it was just an instant bond of like, Oh my God, I can't believe we're young parents and doing this. <laughs> yeah. This is a, a very different task doing a Broadway musical with kids than it was without kids. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, I had no idea. Uh, uh, I mean, it's just uh, so. So my uh, my son is seven. My daughter is four. They have seen the show four times already, and um, they love it. You know, they they don't have a connection to the music because they're so young. But now, like the other day, my daughter went to a birthday party, and um, it was a dance party. It was a dark party, like a glow in the dark party, where they all mm -hmm. made glow in the dark like sh like shirts, and then they danced around to the, a playlist that was chosen by the birthday girl. And one of the songs was "Can't Stop the Feeling." Got that sunshine in my pocket. I got that good soul in my feet. I feel that hot blood in my body when it drops. I can't take my eyes up off it, moving so phenomenally. Boom on lock the way we rock it, so don't stop. And um, so my daughter was like, Dad, they played your song. They played your song. <laughs> and did you just say yes? Yes, they did. <laughs> I said, I don't know if it was my version of the song. I don't know if it was my version of the song. But, um, but they, yeah, I, I, I definitely feel 
the uh, the stage door experience coming out. I remember being one of those kids. And Betsy, I think you were too. Um, I remember well, waiting at the stage door when I was a teenager for the, you know, for the actors to come out to meet them and say hi to them and sort of geek out. And so there's a real full, full circle moment that happens um, every night when we have large groups of kids, which happens more and more right now. And I mean, kids like high school, middle school, high school, they are fervent in their love, in their response to the show. It's pretty special. I want to get to, to, um, you said being a kid in the stage door. I want, I'm going to ask both of you, like, what got you into theater in a second? But real quick, I saw that Katy Perry actually came to see the show the other night, right? So do you know that you're singing, that these people are in the audience and before? Or? I do. Betsy doesn't want to know. I want to know. I love no. knowing. <laughs> but then Betsy plays this whole game where she's like, well, okay, I know it's somebody from the show. I know it's, I know it's somebody who's from our album. So it's got to be either, you know, Jesse J or maybe, <laughs> oh, good, it could be Katy, Katy Perry. And I'm like, do you, do you want me to just tell you? <laughs> no, no, I don't want to know. <laughs> it's to be this super fun game to try and guess. But actually, to be fair, I, I don't usually like to know. No. But then all of a sudden, um, we knew it was someone like, you know, really, 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 really special. Um, and not only special, everyone's special, but like to the production special. At one point in time, I said, okay, Stark, I, can, I don't see anyone out there. And Stark said, this person is so famous, they need to be sequestered. So then I immediately knew, like, you know, look up to one of the boxes. And sure enough, I laid eyes on her somewhere in uh, It's My Life, somewhere toward the end of Act One, and and just had this moment of like, gosh, that this is cool. What it, what is this life? It's just it's really really cool. You two are performing a rock concert to Katy Perry, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, no pressure. Mm -hmm. no pressure, no pressure at all. Has there did like did she come up after the show and she was like, so that was that was pretty okay. Like you know, I got a couple notes for you. She's she's very she was effusive in her love for the show and, <laughs> and her love for the performances. Betsy's in particular. She was a big fan of Miss Betsy Wolf, as we all are. Mm -hmm. And um, and and rightfully so. She's got a connection to this music, obviously, to Max and her like the the anthem of our show is Roar. And that's her song. She feels proud in a way that she in in, in her in the way that she can. I can imagine. She's just, she, she is actually magnetic too. I, I can see why she is such a insanely amazing superstar. I mean, she is effervescent. She just kind of glows as she walks about. It's, it was incredible. It was very special. Have you who else is coming? Yeah. Oh, Will, shall you tell him who else is coming? Okay. So um, <laughs> in terms of the singers, um, we've had uh, from the Max Martin world, Chris Martin from Coldplay was at Ooh. our opening night. Mm -hmm. Simon Cowell was at our opening night. He's not a singer, but in the music business. Uh, J.C. Chazé from NSYNC. We have an NSYNC song mm -hmm. in the show. J.C. was there. I think that that a lot of them have gone to see the, the London version. And I suspect that maybe in a couple months, maybe we'll have some more people sort of coming through the, the doors to, uh, to enjoy the show. Will Ferrell has seen the show twice. <laughs> okay, super fan. Super fan. And that's so what if you haven't seen the show as many times as yeah. Will Ferrell has. It is, it is, you know, in, if whenever you're in a Broadway show, there are always famous people who come to see it and you meet them backstage and that's a thing. But it's very interesting to, for the singers of the songs that you're singing. That's a new experience for me. Right, right. And that, that's why I brought that up because I think for them, it's, it's got to be so weird in a good way. Uh -huh. Like for Katy Perry to see like, oh, my song that, that I helped put on the map is the anthem of this show that's mm. changing so many lives and all the instincts and like the whole, the running gag of, of Dubois band and all, all these other things, right. That are, that are just part of our, our society and pop American pop music, especially has influenced, influenced the world. Right. I go, when we travel all over the place, it, you're hearing these songs all the time and to package it all up. It's, it's just Which brilliant. Martin. Mm -hmm who's like literally created pop in a way yeah. it's it's amazing yeah yeah this the swedes man Swed, swedish bank smart so good so cool <laughs> all right so uh betsy um were you were you a stage door girl like what got you into wanting to perform wanting to sing wanting to be on stage okay full confession so uh when i was 15 i came to new york city for the first time with my family and actually i've been reliving this a lot lately because i happened to go to the 25th anniversary ragtime reunion concert last night 
And I did this whole kind of what what started out as a silly campaign. And it's because um, it was Ragtime was one of my first Broadway shows that I ever actually um, not only saw, but more importantly, for a year and a half before coming to New York, would sit and listen to it in my bedroom. I would listen to it in the car, uh, being driven to school. And it was the first time that I listened to something, a soundtrack, and then the first time I actually saw that very soundtrack on stage. And it was a, I, I can't even, I just like, I teared up last night. I can't even describe what that's like to think about who I was at age 15 and what that meant to me to see my first Broadway show. I did stage door. I went back and I um, stood there and took a picture with Brian Stokes Mitchell. And I even went and saw Chicago the next night and uh, tried to get a picture with Beebe Newworth. And she said, I only take pictures with kids. And I snarkily said, well, I am under 18. So technically I am a child and I have that photo. (laughs) (laughs) Not looking quite so happy, but also like, you know, caught truth. And so last night, actually at the ragtime concert, I, I was just chatting with, you know, just casually chatting with Brian Stokes Mitchell afterward. And I showed him the picture and, and said, can we recreate this? And I say this all just because you forget how impactful a small moment like that can be. So every night, even if I'm, you know, had a rough day or whatever, I'm tired, I'm a mom, whatever it is, right? Because sometimes a job is a job. And um, every night, though, I think about the fact that, like, there could be a kid out there who's seeing a Broadway show for their first time and how that changed the trajectory of my life. And so it is really, really easy to um, just have that like moment of gratitude and excitement um, because I remember what it was like for me. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. And then, so let's see, I just, you grew up in California and um, so you you actually went to CCM, right? Yeah. 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 My whole, you know, one to 18 California and then went to Cincinnati, you know, where you What's that? That's what the normal stopover, right? Before New York, everyone goes to Ohio. And, uh, <laughs> or Michigan. <laughs> Ohio yeah, or Michigan, Michigan, yeah. And made my way, um, <laughs> got used to some snow a little bit, and then made my way to New York almost right after that. Yeah. And one of my first professional jobs, what is this, like a ragtime series, Betsy? Uh, one of my first professional <laughs> jobs, though, was actually being in, in ragtime. So it was like this like part full circle moment and, mm. you know, just insane. Well, there, there, there are shows, I think, that are, gonna last forever and and ragtime being one of them and i think and juliet will be will be another one it's just these things that talk talk to your souls right and Mm -hmm. and touch you in a way that like i said it multi-generational the message is there etc etc you know we can harp on this forever because it's amazing but okay stark you're a stage door man stage door boy well a little stark where where did that where did your love for uh for performing come from i was lucky to travel a lot as a kid with my family and we came to new york um, I saw um, Starlight Express in 1984, 85, I think, is my first Broadway musical to to witness. And it was obviously, you know, for a kid, it's just incredible. Uh, you know, for that, it, it didn't start out for me with people like walking around on stage. They were on roller skates and and skating around your, you know, behind you and above you and and in these amazing, you know, very 80s, you know, Andrew Lloyd Webber, like costumes and it was great. I, we staged toward that. I saw Phantom of the Opera in London um, uh, shortly after that. I saw Les Mis. Like these, have, these have all been my favorite musical after I saw them. I would like get obsessed with each of them. And then when I was in high school, I had a VHS. One of my friends had a VHS tape of Pippin. It must have been a bootleg or something, but it was like the Ben Vereen Pippin, and it was VHS and it was grainy. And that for me was like, oh wow, that that was then my favorite. Um, I went to college at USC. I studied acting. I got my BFA and a full circle moment for me, um, was my freshman year. I took a class, um, about the American musical. And one of the ones that we studied was ragtime because it was pretty (laughs) recent. (laughs) (laughs) And, and, and it, you know, this is, it was 97. I was a freshman and, and so it was pretty recent. And so I remember studying ragtime. And then getting into the album like Betsy did. And then however many years later, I'm in New York. I'm like working as an actor and I get cast in a uh, in Shakespeare in the Park into Twelfth Night. And I'm cast opposite Audra McDonald. 
and we're like kissing on stage and that like and, that, and I had these things I'm just thinking I, I studied you in college and now I'm next to you on a stage in New York City under the stars and I feel so grateful because I know that's probably the story for a lot of us who have made it to this level is that we were that kid and so like Betsy says when when I'm out there I'm talking to these kids uh, at the stage door like s- some of them are going to pursue this and and succeed and maybe one day they will we will be kissing them yes we'll be kissing them <laughs> at shakespeare in the park <laughs> no it's true it really it really is it really is true i audra grew up actually so this is even stranger i start i'm gonna i'm gonna like let's just make this about audra now right audra grew up 40 minutes away from me and so i actually watched her as a junior company member when she was on stage when she was like younger audra <sighs> And I watched her do shows there. Then she would come back and do these hometown concerts. And so I actually was like, oh, who does Audra study with? I want to study with her. So I actually took from Audra's voice teacher oh, growing up. Amazing. Well, and, and then I was doing Spelling Bee in Boston. That was my first professional gig. And I was hired for the, the San Francisco company, the Boston company. And I was like, I found out that Audra McDonald was going to be in one tin in the shade on Broadway. And I didn't tell my agents, didn't tell anybody. And I said, on my day off, I'm going to drive to New York City go in for an open call, an equity open call, sign up. So Monday morning, I went as early as can. It was my first open oh call my ever. God. Up. Didn't tell my agents. who <laughs> probably were like, Betsy, why didn't you tell us? Maybe we could have gotten yeah, it. Could, yeah. <laughs> but I was like so scared to tell anyone. First one to sign up actually ended up booking the job, hmm. which by the way, my agents never quite acknowledged, which was really funny to me. They're like, yeah, and you, you got this job. And I would be like, uh, I don't want to tell you how I got the job. Yeah. <laughs> Technically, my Broadway debut in the ensemble with Audra McDonald, right, you know, right there. Awesome. And so, yes, it's I, I sometimes do think of that when someone says, like, I love you so much at the stage door and they're an actor. I sometimes think I actually probably might share the stage with you someday. Mm-hmm. And how cool, how cool is that? That reminds me of that that meme of uh, was it Matt Damon where it just ages all of a sudden real quick from <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, God. And now I'm old and it's <laughs> like Stokes, right? Stokes has been around forever. He's an icon in, mm. and he doesn't look, he dude doesn't age. He's just no. a beautiful man. But like when you showed, does he remember you? Did, did does he, re- he's probably met so many people, but like, do you remember this kind of thing? Like when you showed him that picture, he was like, oh yeah, I remember you. You made an impression on me. Or he's like, eh, just another kid. Well, no, I've, I've worked with him. I worked with him in, Gosh, I want to say I did I did some I did a concert with him in 2005. So I've known him throughout the years. But what's funny is I had never showed him that photo. Mm. You know, he, of course, like was like, oh, my gosh, you have it in photo evidence. Jeez, Louise, you know, because it's one thing to tell him a story like everyone has pictures with him. But it's it is cool to actually, you know, be a working professional and say, here you go. Look at us. And I looked crazy so i got a really cute photo with him last night where i look normal so i'm, I'm happy now <laughs> well but, um go ahead stark you say something no no i was just i was thinking you know i have remembered people at the stage door over the years but it's usually the people who see things multiple times um and uh but it's always sweet whenever somebody holds up a phone and or a picture and says hey look this is this is 10 years ago and it's it it's it's meaningful you know there's a dedication there and you know, it's, you can't take it lightly. That's really cool. That's very, very cool. Um, this has been an episode of, of full circle moments and coincidences. Um, Mm. right. Uh, as we're recording this, my, my up here takeover, the new series on Hulu just started. Yeah. Betsy, I see your, your eyebrows went up. So you appeared in the up here stage version with with Robert and and Kristen because they created that a long time ago back in 2015 right so I sort of acknowledge that like everything's coming around full circle full circle here that's how I met Bobby and Kristen and Alex Timbers and that was all you know that was pre frozen and and that's yeah I gosh I loved that show I loved it so much it was so special and so I'm just so excited that in some way, shape or form, it, it has another life. I cannot wait to watch it. I'm just going to binge it. It's so good. And, and, the, the, and they're the, so clever and funny. The, the soundtrack's out too. So like you can go to Spotify right now or wherever and like okay. binge everything. Like the, the, the music's out and it's incredible because it's, you know, the Lopez's and mm-hmm. um, anyway, <laughs> it's such an incredible show. Oh, and then another full circle moment. Yeah, Betsy, you were in, you were in, you played Elsa in the 
lab of Disney's Frozen, the stage production, like all this, it just weaves in and out together so well. Yes. Yeah, that's how I met the whole team when Alex was still involved. I, I spent about a year, a year and some change developing that. And then at some point, um, you know, Alex departed the project and, and uh, yeah, but it's just like, this is the thing, like, I can't, like, I, I pinch myself when I think about, like, I got to work, you know, I get to work with these people. And, and Kristen just came to see our show the other day. And I finally got to tell her, my daughter's like singing Frozen now. Mm. And it's just, like, it's insane how time flies. And it's just, it's also so meaningful to just think, like, I have, I get to, I get to just be in the same room with legends. It's like, what is, what is this life? Yeah. But you know what though? I'm going to flip that because to many, many people, you two are also in that same category. Like, do you realize that? To, Cause to them, right? Like I realize I'm neighbors. I'm actually like smack in the middle in Brooklyn here between the Lopez's and Sonia Taya. Like they're both <laughs> my neighbors and <laughs> not, it's just funny because I, I'm saying that, to to just say like they think they're regular people at least i think they think they're regular people i assume you two think you're regular people but to others you two are the legends now right you're on stage and singing this and something uh, one thing i love about this business and the level of fame that you get from doing what we do is that you walk out of the you're standing on stage and you are the focus of everything you get this incredible applause and you walk out the stage door and you have lots of people that maybe you're waiting to say hi to you and get your photo and take your picture. And then once you're done and you walk, you walk about 50 feet and you're totally anonymous. Mm -hmm. uh, apart from the occasional person who sees you and smiles at you and their eyes go big and like, oh, and they'll say, love you in the show. It's like the perfect amount of fame. You're just a regular person unless you're in like the sort of, you know, one square block of your theater. I feel like a regular person. I certainly am a regular person up here in my neighborhood in Westchester. Uh, I don't think of myself as, a, as anything but just a lucky guy who, who gets to sort of live his dream and do the thing that he wanted to do as a kid for a living. Well, I'm uber famous. I just got recognized buying a chai and someone said, Betsy, you made it to ragtime. So I don't know if to start <laughs> like for you. I but set that one up for you. I just really can't go anywhere without, you know... <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, it... I'm just kidding. But mm. to the woman who said that when I was getting my chai, it really did mean the world. Mm. It's so much fun. I, I really, I, I can imagine that it's really interesting when, when you do get, de when you do get recognized, um, because it, it's somebody who really, who, who is so passionate. Because, like you said, Stark, it's like, it's not like TV and movie famous is different from Broadway famous. Yes, and. In, in a good way. And when you do get recognized, though, for being Broadway famous, it's that person who truly, like, you have changed their life because mm -hmm. they've gone above and beyond to see a show multiple times or they... Well, it's, 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 it's niche, like what you're saying. Like, yeah. it's not like, like Katy Perry or Taylor Swift walking around. But so when someone does compliment you, you're like, oh, wow, you like know what I do. Yeah. It takes a certain level of then interest. And it's it's small enough to make you feel you know, really, really seen. Um, yeah. And for Very the sweet. most part, you know, I don't, I don't imagine that people that are fans of Broadway are going to go out of their way to walk up and tell you that they didn't like what you did. <laughs> <laughs> so it's always positive. <laughs> well, well, I forgot. Oh man, I wish I remember who this was. There was somebody the other day I was interviewing who who was in a revival or something this was months ago and she said that somebody came up to her at the stage door and was like you're okay but i like the original better oh amazing oh my gosh i love that for for that person mm. oh, i wish i knew i just remember who that was but um what you were saying betsy a second ago about like just these relationships and i believe it was michael yuri um who who gave me the advice once who said be the person that everyone wants to work with the next time mm. And it sounds like you two, you know, you're the epitomes of that because you just continue and continue and start like your journey with Anne Juliet even started. It started with the out of town. Right. And then you did you didn't you go to West End and now you're on Broadway like you've traveled. With no, the show? no, 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 no. You didn't go to West I, End. No, no, no. I'm I, my journey started like not that long ago. I I originally uh, the, the project I was made aware of the project in November um, right after Betsy, you know, was was uh, was approached. Um, I didn't know that at the time because I passed on it. I passed on the audition because I had another job that was going to conflict with it. 
um, or that that was going to line up right next to it. And it was also out of town. And I have my two small kids and I just couldn't imagine going away to, you know, to California for three months and then immediately going away to Toronto. So I was very lucky that they did not find the right person and they came back. Don't get me started on this journey of finding Shakespeare. I up until like, I want to say two weeks before we were starting, I got a cast list. And then it still said Shakespeare, TBD. And I called and I was like, what is going on? Who is going to play? Op-? And I had had chemistry reads and I had seen, I had done things with some dear friends in the business where I know that they were searching and searching and searching. And the reality is, is and, I, and I know Stark knows this, it's just like they, it was worth the wait because he is perfect. You are perfect in this. You make my job easy. Um, and I'm so grateful too, because so much of what, you know, I do and what we do is based on the work that we do together. Yeah. You know, this is not our first rodeo and we both know what it's like yeah. to, um, when you, you know, it's so important what your co-star is bringing to the table and, and even importantly, what they're not bringing to the table. And so I just like lucked out, you were worth the wait, but the fact that you passed on this project just still cracks me up to this day. And it was for personal reasons. It wasn't because I didn't want to do it. And I'm just glad that when it did come back around, my wife and I, uh, you know, we read it and we listened to the soundtrack and she was the one who said, you have to do this. We, you have to, you, this is too good. You have to do this. We'll make it work. And we have, you know, she has, she's made, she's, she's the reason I'm able to do this. Props to her for pushing you to do it because yeah. the show wouldn't be what it is without both of you exactly in what you're doing. So I think that's a wonderful place to wrap up with the three standard closing questions that I ask everybody to wrap up. And you both will get to answer. We'll go back and forth and alternate. So flip a coin. Ding, boop. There we go. All right, Betsy, we'll start with you. What motivates you? My daughter's face. Mm. Making, making her smile, hearing that little kid giggle. Little kid mm. giggles are the best. That's like, it's the best part of my day. Mm, Stark. Um, I don't like being idle. When the time comes where I don't have work, I hate it. And so when I do have work, it's gratitude for the work that motivates me. I'm so grateful. I know that this is finite. I know that this job will end and it'll end before I even realize it. So it's sort of gratitude for, for the ability to do this and continue to do this. Beautiful. All right. So then Stark, your turn next. What advice would you give to your younger self and younger people listening now starting out down a similar path? Stick with it. You know, make sure, you know, to be blunt, make sure that it's what you want to do and make sure that your reasons are pure and make sure that you want, if you want to be a successful actor, that you have to love acting. You have to be ready to hear the word no many, 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 many more times than the word yes. And if it, if, if it is the thing that you love and that you want to do it, then stick with it and be persistent and work really hard and always be prepared. Betsy? cliche phrase just trust your gut just comes up a lot i can i can like mark like really specific times in my life where i knew what my gut was saying and either perhaps because of other reasons or other people said no nah, i think this is important i uh i have just learned that your your gut is right it's there for a reason and um and uh yeah be messy just be messy there's boring uh, perfect is so boring and so I love the people in my life that encouraged me to just kind of step out of the box because it's, it's what I did kind of out of that like expected thing that I think makes me even more unique and actually is what makes me the most joyous. So I assume that perhaps if people just are kind of told, you know, just be messy for them, whatever that means for them, that'll make them that much more joyous in their work. And make bold choices. That's basically mm. everything. Yep, be different. Be the best you you can be. Yep. I hear that a lot. Okay, so Betsy, back to you. This is the hardest question now. If you can only see one show for the rest of your life, but you can see it as many times as you want, what would you see? I sort of have an idea what you'll answer. <laughs> one show? One show. One musical, one play, one show, one, something st on stage. Whatever your, your heart desires. Okay. Oh, this is such a rude question. This is mean. Okay, fine. You know what? It's going to be Into the Woods. Not Ragtime. I love Ragtime. I love Ragtime with all of my heart. But if I have to see one, probably going to have to pick Into the Woods. 
Oh, I wish everyone could see Stark's face right now. He's so in despair. He's so he's like he's like blah 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 blah. What is my answer? <laughs> I'm just <laughs> he's thinking. Like, he's, what? He's, he's so much meaning. Look at him. He's still he's still going. Can I pick something that I was in because I of never course. got to see it? Of course, kinky boots. Kinky boots. I would I would see kinky boots for the rest of my life. But with you in it or with a cover? It doesn't matter. Actually, that's one thing I learned about that show is that it doesn't matter who's in it. The show is bigger than any any one person. And I did get to see it. I was there for closing night on Broadway. And then I went back and was there for opening night off Broadway. And both times I brought my son and I was moved. And, uh, you know, obviously my connection to the show is very deep. And so it's just kind of a cheat of an answer, but that's my answer at this moment. It's not a cheat at all. It's if it, if it speaks to you, it speaks to you. So it speaks to me. It speaks to a lot of people. Uh, that's the one show that more than anything, people say, I loved this show whenever I'm walking out of a stage door. And probably, yeah. you know, maybe, and maybe this, maybe Anne Juliet will surpass it at some point, but at the moment, that's the mm. one. Great, great. Well, where can we connect with, uh, with you on social media, Betsy? Mostly I'm on Instagram these days, the wolf pack. And that's wolf with an E, please. Wolf Yes, wolf And then I occasionally do really ridiculous things on TikTok, but you can mostly find me on Instagram. Gotcha. Stark. My Instagram handle, though I do not use it very much, uh, is at Starkweather, which is a, nick- a nickname, a nickname that a friend gave me many, many years ago. And so it's, there's no real, you know, there's no reason behind it other than a, a, somebody said it to me once. You need, you need like a, like a, what's Will Ferrell's character from Anchorman, Ron Swanson? You need to say, no, I'm Stark. Ron Weather. Burgundy. Ron, Ron Burgundy. Burgundy. I'm, Burgundy. Yeah. I'm Ron, I'm a Stark Weather. Yeah, Stark Weather. There you go. Um, oh, and and Betsy, quick plug for Broadway Evolved, your musical theater training program. Oh, my gosh. Thank you for mentioning that. I can't believe it. We're in our sixth summer and we already are full for June. This is like the heartbeat. My parents are both educators and and I swore I would never do it. But then I just like I can't help but actually just say, yes, I want to I want to you know, run a program. So if you're 14 to 18, check it out. It's really a special, special, special program. BroadwayEvolved.com, right? Website, BroadwayEvolved.com, TikTok. We're like uber famous on TikTok too. It's crazy. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you both so much. I love you both. You're incredible. You You are legends Mm. to these people now. Legends. Thank you. you.